I think it, it's amazing to always show the film um, in a university context because um, you know the, these are issues that are going to be needed to be confronted by sort of the next generation of academics as well as practitioners, whether they be archaeologists or lawyers or you know um, politicians, even anyone working in policy. That's really challenging, actually, and it's something that we don't think about so much because, you know, we think, OK, we've got to get rid of Daesh, and then that's the problem solved. But actually, the problems now are around things like what do local people really want? I, mean, I think what the film does is capture beautifully the battle over cultural memory and why history matters to people, why artefacts, why statues, why museums, commemorations, um, are an integral part of the way that people tell stories about themselves. And I think, uh, in terms of how this relates to my own research, um, the current sort of battle over cultural memory in Egypt is so important precisely because this is such a significant uh, way in which power is fought over. Of course, the destruction of cultural property falls under international criminal law, but it also falls under international human rights law. We have protection of cultural property within the international human rights system that developed in 1948 as a result of the horrors of Nazi Germany, and it's been foregrounded in recent years, mostly in response to what happened in Yugoslavia and to the ways in which cultural property was brought before the ICTY, but also in relation to looking at culture as really a form not just of identity of an individual but of a group and of the collective. What really struck me about the film was the way that people kept talking about identity and about personhood because property isn't just a thing, it's part of who we are. There was a particular quote or, or, or a moment in the film where um, this kind of convergence of individual creativity and sort of collective consciousness um, come together in what, you know, in, in, in the bridge um, and, and I think that that uh, was both powerful kind of um, in and of itself, but also as a metaphor for why culture is so significant, because in some ways it transcends individuality, mortality, it, it, it survives us. One of the things we were talking about um, as people filtered out um, of the uh, screening was the fact that this is a documentary which contextualises by taking the long view. So we're not just panicking about what's happening now, we're actually taking a long view, seeing where um, these kinds of actions come from, how they're, why they're motivated um, in particular ways, you know, how they're part of um, warfare. And, and the point is, is that that is one of the powers of cinema, I think. Um, particularly documentary uh, film can take you through that process with a group of experts, um, bringing alive the archival material that we have and the archival material that's been lost. Um, and this is a film that really draws um, its power from that possibility.